everybody, welcome to Beyond the Lines. My name is Sarah, I'm the artist by Pinsel Geschichten and today I'm working on this page some more, uh, starting the table coloring. It takes uh, quite a lot of time and I'm talking to you about how I choose colors for the wood, how I separate things <coughs> that are on the table. Uh, make them still visible, add quite a bit of contrast. And uh, I'm also, what, what, what did I want to say? Gosh, um, I forgot. There was something else, but it just <sighs> went out of my mind. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'm gonna see you next week. Time for the next part. Um, I want to work on the table, as I had said in the last video and I want to start with what is on the table that is uncolored so far. Let's, so I think um, a good uh, color for the basket would be something a little more lighter. So I'm starting off with yellow ochre and just uh, giving this a whole layer because I'm planning to have the table be rather a dark brown. So to set the items apart, especially here in this area, um, and have the basket be standing out a bit, I want to give it a little bit of a lighter shade. The background is going to be a little quicker when it comes to coloring, uh, just because I'm choosing two different kinds of media for it that is not colored pencils. So I think the most time consuming part is the colored pencil part. And uh, I might be able to finish the background in one sitting like in one video. So I'm kind of hoping that I can finish the color pencil part today and then just have another video for um, the background. But let's see how far I get. I'm not stressing myself if there's uh, not five parts in total, but six, that is fine with me as well. And I hope with you too. Gotta take a peek what the next picture is. Oh, the next one is um, going to be a little quicker probably because it is bigger objects and I think I can use um, maybe watercolors or ink tents on them that would probably fit. So we got the under color, <laughs> under painting, and I'm staying a little more in the warmer uh, browns here to shade my basket because I want to have the table um, a little more on the cooler part of the spectrum. So I think it would fit to shade the basket with more of a warmer shade of brown. So the light definitely hits the handle from the left hand side and the right hand side. So I'm going darker in the middle.
and also the uh, top of the basket is l hit by the light but not the inner part of the basket so I'm shading that Anything here is in the shadow, so the brown on top, by the way, I chose uh, brown ochre. On to the darkest color, I'm going to use burned umber. Now I'm shading according to the shape of the basket. And also those plants here are casting a shadow, so adding a bit of the darker brown here as well. Before I bring in the Payne's Grey or Indigo or maybe um, Prussian Blue, I'm going to blend my browns with the yellow ochre.
this just the second layer of um, the yellow ochre just get, gives the lighter part of the basket a richer look. All right, now for the real shading. Um, going to take my paints gray like adding it to the really dark parts For example here also here the gray also might give it a little more of a weathered look because this basket might not be brand new And though you might not see a lot anymore from the brown ochre, it still helps to have the color underneath. It might peek through here and there. And also, uh, it just is another layer on the paper, um, something that gets rid of those white speckles. And I think it just also enriches the overall color of the basket. It doesn't look so flat when you have um, a couple of different shades that you layer on top of each other. I need to blend out my gray a little better here. I'm using the lines of the illustration here to add a little bit of the paints gray. And not only have the middle section be shaded. I'm gonna add a little bit of my paints gray there as well, very lightly. I think you could call that a basket. A little more blending with my yellow ochre. And I need to take care of that part here. Pulling up my paints gray just a little more. And that is the basket. Now I can go on to the bowls um, and the pestle and mortar and the jars and such. And I think, um, huh, do I want to have anything of them be wooden or do I just want to go for a stone? Hmm. Difficult. I think I just want to go with different kinds of stones. So maybe some grayish one, maybe some um, so 
some uh, uh, what's it called brownish ones so like, more like a terracotta maybe so I chose indigo cool gray number what do I have in my hand number six cool gray number three and uh, a blue which is indenthrine blue so I'm starting off with my lightest color Ugh, the edges of the paper are always a hassle to color. <clears throat> ah, especially when the direction of the object is not uh, horizontal. Going in with my darkest gray. And I do have the Payne's gray next to me as well, so I'm going to add that too, I think. The line work here tells you already where the light hits the bowl and anything else is a little darker except from uh, the rim of that uh, bowl here. And going on with Payne's Grey. And I'm still applying a very light touch. to the blue, the cooler blue. Just putting that on top. Just makes the gray a little more rich like I always say layering different kinds of colors makes for a richer shadow just using a black pencil for example uh, will probably make your um, subject of coloring or drawing painting um, a little flatter if you happen to work in a monochrome black and white gray scale uh, fashion on your art piece then I would definitely recommend a black pencil but not really when it comes to using all the colors of the rainbow so I chose my indigo to layer on top
Now I'm going to blend this back into the um, Payne's Gray. Adding just a little more onto these two sections here before I move to, to my very dark, cool gray. And last but not least, another layer of my light cool grey, bringing all of the sections of this bowl together. A little more of my paints gray here just to emphasize the ink line that I kind of lost here or that's a little bit milky or blurry and there is the first bowl Now I can move on to the mesel, uh, pestle and mortar, <laughs> not mesel and porter, but I got a sip a little bit of tea first, my Earl Grey, which um, fits perfectly with the color spectrum I'm using, right? So I think I'm going to use the same color scheme. Um, there's a little bit of light peeking through her arm and uh, the blue dress of Gilis also reflects on the mortar. So there's a little bit of light here, there's a little bit of light here. The rest is actually... oh uh, no, hold on. There is a little bit of light here on the rim because let's take a longer pencil. If you put it, whoop, if you put it down and see what path the light travels, you can see it hits this part of the rim, a tiny little bit. Um, the pestle is in the bowl so I wouldn't really make it oh, maybe that tiny part here it's maybe some light hitting it but only very little so I'm using my dark cool gray for the rest as my uh, first layer color
onto the paint's gray, darkening up those shadows. Moving on towards the in the spring blue. Because some of the light um, that hits her dress bounces off of the um, the mortar and uh, with the indigo I'm doing some more shading to the indigo, uh, to the paints gray. And now I can blend out my darker gray parts with the cool gray, the dark cool gray. Forgot a section. Ay, ay, ay. Down here. Now I can add another layer of my light gray to blend the parts together, like the shadow and the light section. That part here is not really blended well, so I'm just 
feathering out my dark gray a little more. that one. Now on to the jars and I want to go a little more brown with those but not terracotta so not a warm brown per se. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. I'm going with I think this is raw umber and then I'm layering some grays with it, I think. So let's start with a small jar. And then I'm putting the dark cool gray on top that I also used on the bowl and the pestle and mortar. Just to tone down that brown a bit onto my Paints gray for the dark shadows. A little bit of indigo just to make these shadows a little richer. with the raw umber to blend everything out. Using the lightest touch I don't want this to look too brown. I just uh, want the layers to be blended together. That's not bad I think. So I'm doing the same thing with the big jar. Again, starting with a layer of raw umber. a little bit of the cool gray to tone it down.
starting to shade with my um, paint gray. And I'm pretty much shading the big jar just like I did the small one. So I'm going in And again, intensifying my shadow with indigo. And another light layer of my raw umber just to bring everything together before hitting the jar again with the cool gray. Almost kicked my eraser from the table. That would not have been cool. Uh, cool gray, cool gray. Almost there. Ah, 
All right, final bowl, and I think I want to go with the grays again. Uh, but this time around, I want to have a warmer gray. Um, uh, that's maybe a little too dark. Let's go with warm gray number two and five. I'm using the line work again where it indicates, okay, this is the darkest part. Indigo on top to enrich in the shadows. With these kinds of objects, it's pretty much the same over and over again when it comes to technique. However, by just changing up the colors a tiny little bit, so moving away from the cool gray and adding warm gray, and a little bit of Payne's gray as well, um, you get a different kind of a look. just very subtle when it comes to the difference but I think it is enough of a difference to make this look cohesive and real so uh, this is my darker <laughs> uh, Bringing in a little bit of the dark gray here. And then blending stuff out with my light gray. A little more of a brownish tint, so I'm adding the uh, burnt umber that I already used on the basket. Just a tiny little, whoop, don't throw things away, Sarah. Uh, just a little tiny touch of some more paints gray down here. And up here. And don't like this part here, so I'm just going to smooth it out with a little bit of the darker uh, warm gray.
that's it. So all the objects on the table are colored and now I can choose my colors for the table itself. But before that I gotta make myself another tea because this one's empty. New tea is on the desk. Now I gotta choose my colors for the table. As I had said earlier I want to have cooler and darker shades of brown. Mm. Oh that was hot. Ow ow ow. Um, so I gotta choose which ones I want. I want you. I want you. I want you and I need to have a little bit of a very light almost beige tone where the light hits the table so there's like a reflection or something. Mm -hmm. Definitely gonna use my Payne's Grey and uh, Indigo to shade maybe a little bit of black but I'm holding back on that for now. So I do have the Walnut Brown, uh, Dark Sepia and nougat. Mm, yummy. So I want to start I think with the lighter section where the light hits just to have my values in there correctly. So let's check the time. Okay, got a little more time to color uh, the disc. So this is where the light hits. And here as well. Uh, here and then it already gets darker so there's a little bit of the light brown back here before uh, Galis casts a shadow which she does on this part here already all right so this is where the light is the very light light. Anything else I will just layer uh, or just color with one layer of the walnut brown as my base color. And I'm just working on the uh, top of the table for now, not on this part here. I'm just gonna section that off to um, not get myself bored with coloring that huge desk. I think it works a little better, at least for me, when I section off things. especially when they are bigger objects to color and um, I'm using color pencils. It's very different when it comes to uh, other media, so say watercolor or ink tents or something. Mm -hmm. I'm not sectioning off as much, but with colored pencils I I just do.
So have to be careful to not color too much of the plants, but by having them colored first and really putting down a lot of pigment, the paper hardly can take anything anymore. So it doesn't matter if I go over some of those greener parts, they won't be brown. And that was the reason why I didn't start with um, the table before coloring the plants. This is why I went the other way around because all those tiny sections here going around them, shading them and having white paper next to it, that would have been a, that's yeah, almost an excruciating task maybe. I know the word is quite harsh, but it would have taken forever. So by going the other way around, just makes it easier for me going in between those leaves and everything. Don't have to be as careful. I still am, don't get me wrong, but um, yeah, it's just a little easier for me. I don't have to be overly particular with the way I color, just very careful. Especially here on those light gray stems. have to make sure that I don't forget any section between those leaves. Gotta pay attention to my coloring page or to the picture, especially here in between, making sure that I hit everything with my brown.
Okay, base layer is in. I think I didn't forget anything. So let's have another sip of tea. And then I'm going around the desk and um, shade my darkest spots. Okay, break is done. Now I'm going to color the darkest shadows first. And I'm using the guideline of uh, the line work. As you can see there's these um, lines here that indicate where some of the shadows are. So I took sepia first, now layering Paints gray on top. and the trusty indigo. if I have the paints gray on top here. I think I do. Just to make sure. Yeah, I did have it on top. On to the next section. the next one.
of these bigger objects like the table and sometimes uh, now I'm missing the word <laughs> gosh I'm sometimes um, lured into rushing things but I just gotta make sure that I don't side is done. We can move a little bit towards the middle here. Moving on to my paints grey again. Final step, a little bit of indigo. It takes quite a bit of time to get everything oh, shaded, but I hope you don't mind that I did put on a little bit of music and you can just see <laughs> what I'm doing. I'm, I know I'm not talking very much, but it's quite repetitive. 
so I guess there's not a lot for me to say at this point. just did uh, startle me there. It says it doesn't have any battery anymore, which is fine for me. I can change the battery in a minute. about the noise in the background in case I can't uh, edit it out but the cleaning lady for the house is here and the hallway in the apartment complex gets cleaned.
so these are all the darkest spots. Now I've got to sharpen my pencil. Oh, it's the wrong one. I need the sepia one. Because now I'm shading the table itself, so it's darker here and I had to put the light spots in here. So now I'm just going to add quite a bit of the sepia. Ooh, to shade the rest of the table. that I shade uh, with the cone of light so I gotta make sure that I don't uh, put sepia pencil down everywhere on the table not even close so i'm just putting it where it needs to go like for example this part here this very narrow strip is facing away from the light so this is going to be dark Getting to the part where 
I will put in my, what's it called, walnut brown a little more. Just extending the sepia a tiny bit. Moving back to um, the walnuts. I'm going to blend in the nougat, the very light brown, right away. I'm going to use a little bit of the walnut here underneath the string. That's a very light shadow because there's hardly anything there to cast a shadow. Put a little bit of the yellow ochre on top 
because we have a yellow light coming through the window. a little bit of that lighter brown also in this section again adding a little bit of the light yellow ochre and uh, back to the walnut the next shading part. I'm going to take a paint spray. And back to the sepia for the very dark parts.
And back to walnuts. Almost fine with the top of the desk. I'm just adding a little more of the indigo here on that dark shadow area. this section here it this faces away from the light so this is going to be very dark like here which means I'm going to add Payne's gray Thank you. 
and indigo blue. Then of course I'm back to sepia to just blend this all together to also add a little bit of a shadow here on those lines that are visible on that part of the desk. That is the desk and I, oh, the top of the desk and I'm really feeling it in my arms that I'm coloring for hours and hours right now. 
Okay, the arm is rested for a couple of minutes. So um, this whole section here, um, aside from the legs of the um, table, everything else is in the darkest shadow. So I'm going to color this section here and then I'm gonna end the video because I probably will have to um, rest my arm for a little longer after that and uh, maybe I'm gonna film this afternoon but I need a few hours of rest on my arm to be able to color the rest of the table with colored pencils. So I'm starting off with a layer of walnut brown just as an under coloring onto her painting almost. And this might be a part where I might add a little bit of a black pencil. Um, I'm not sure yet. I will decide that when I get to it. So this part here. Has its under painting its base layer and now I'm going to sharpen my pencils again. <laughs> my arm really hurts, my left one. <laughs> Boy, <laughs> can feel the muscles knotting up. All right. So I'm starting with uh, sepia and I'm pretty much going about it like with the darkest shadows here. I'm uh, starting in those areas as well. I think just to break it up for me, I'm going section by section, layering the colors on top of each other. And a little bit of indigo. This is where I might add a little black later on, just in those very dark spots here.
And that's by the way my roommate who is destroying the uh, plates. <laughs> At least that's what it sounds like. No, he's just having lunch. This is a really super slow process. Um, thinking about maybe speeding up that part here. It's the same repetitive thing over and over again. Sepia, Payne's gray, indigo, back to sepia for any of these sections between the flowers. So this is pretty much the part of the desk that um, is kind of like carved out so it sits back uh, and is not as much in the foreground as those flower vines are here. So I'm shading them very very dark and the more I go to the left hand side the more blue I'm adding because again the light is here so something from the floor light from the floor might bounce back onto the wood a little bit but uh, anything in this section here is going to be very dark in comparison and it's gonna have a little more of a bluish tint because it's a uh, major shadow area so this is how I'm going about it um, 
alternatively instead of speeding this up because again my arm is getting quite tired already and I might rather film another video this afternoon I might just God, let me check the time yeah uh, I'm gonna color this section that I'm gonna call it a video or a day and next week I'm gonna continue and after starting the video and explaining once more uh, how I color those sections I will probably speed it up then to get the colored pencil part of this page finished in the next video. That's what I came up with as an idea. What you think? I think it's quite reasonable. You still get a feel of how long it takes to color these kinds of pages with these intricate patterns and um, shading things and such. But it's maybe not too boring for you to watch. in my arm to even hold a pencil. So I'm not gonna color anything with a black pencil for now. I will adjust that once I have my whole uh, table section here colored. Yeah, that's okay, but that would be it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's a lot of woodwork today. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. I will see you next week continuing this uh, pattern and hopefully finally finishing the color pencil part of this page. <laughs> Um, thank you very much for watching. If you would like this, liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. And in case you're new to the channel, uh, uh, please blah, I can't talk. Please subscribe and hit the notification button and uh, peruse the channel. Look back on all the parts for this particular page in case you are coloring it too. I, I would love for you to put it on social media, preferably maybe Instagram, and tag me so I can uh, look at your lovely artwork and, um, well, chat with you about it. And, uh, yeah, have a wonderful day. I'm going to see you next week. Bye.